at Subway today. I've got a, uh, a 12 inch Cuban crunch it's called. So I've never had one before. Should be interesting. Before I get started, happy birthday to Militia from Austin, Ray, and Dominic. Uh, Militia's birthday is July 8th. So happy birthday. Now, one of my viewers um, PM'd me a while ago. Anyways, as I was saying, one of my viewers PM me and uh, wanted a, had a suggestion for me. Okay, so before I get to that, I got some Miss Vicky's uh, jalapeno chips. I, I love the Tropicana orange. Uh, grapefruit bubbly. And I got a Meteor chocolate bar. Meteor, Meteor chocolate. These are good. I buy them at the dollar store. They're amazing. Okay, so one of my viewers, Guppy Bill, sent me a message and had a suggestion for me. There's a lot of stuff on the Cuban Crunch. A lot. I think the Crunch is supposed to be the, the dry onions or something. Those dehydrated onions. So Bill had suggested that um, I talk about the women who have shaped my life, you know, not good or bad, you know, the, the impact they've had on my life. And of course, those women would be few and far between. As a kid, girls, but back then they were girls, not women, and I was a boy, not a man. And having had a career in, in healthcare and the culinary trade, I've worked with a lot of women, you know, scats of women, lots of them, uh, but they were co-workers and friends. Very few of them were close enough to really shape my life at all. Now there's really six women. my mother she my life tremendously I mean she taught me how to use a spoon you know had a big influence on me you know it's been said that a lot of times 
men will choose a, a woman, much like their mother. Um, maybe to some degree that is true. Could be, you know, you're learning, you're looking for certain qualities, you know, certain characteristics in a woman, you know, that, that your mom was, you know, uh, you know, subconsciously or, or whatever, you know, and, and so that's quite true. Uh, I think um, my my ex-wife Linda was was much like the. Or, Was, was much like that kind of, kind of like my mom in a sense so I think most mothers really sons' lives as well as their daughters and whatever, you know, of, of course that's going to happen because they, they've raised you, you know, and, and that sort of thing. Um, my mom, to this day, I've never heard my mom use the F word, ever. encouraged me to do better. So I wasn't sure if I should include my mother and my daughter in this list. Because there's actually six other women besides my mother and my daughter. So, so of course my mother had a huge impact on, on how I turned out, you know. Like I said, she raised me. You know, always very polite, conduct, conducts herself socially very well, you know. and have a racist or bigoted bone in her body. Very accepting of, of everyone. So, once again, she was the first influence in my life, undeniably. Now my daughter, uh, who was born in 1990, you know, she made me realize just how precious little girls are, you know. Uh, prior to her being born, I've, I have two sons, but you know, there's there's just something about uh, you know, having a little girl that really melts a, a, a man's heart, you know, um, and she's made me uh, very protective of her, just brought out the best of me, she's always made me want to be the best I can be, you know, we can't be the perfect father, but you know, we try. She's getting married. She's 33. She's getting married soon. She's getting married August the 2nd, 2024. And for me, it's 
it's it's gonna be a huge day for her, but a huge day for me because I got to walk her down the aisle, which is something I think just about every dad dreams of, you know. So, as far as shaping my life, she's made me want to be the best person I could be and give the and lead by example. Youngest, she's ten years younger than me. She's the strongest in the family by far. So unlike my mother. Sisters never really, whether they were my sisters or her, if they weren't, if I didn't have them as sisters, I can't say they made my life any different. They didn't shape my life or change who I am or who, or who I became. This little cabin out the woods, kind of like a, almost kind of like a hillbilly type thing, you know. She lived about an hour away. So, we met this one night, kind of connected. 
connected. I'd seen her before. She had been to some of the parties before, but that night we connected and started talking. Grass Festival. I 
with some other guys and one guy named Stan, he got all the girls because he was just, he was well built, you know, good, very chiseled look, you know, and always in good shape. He was a roofer, he was always well tanned and, and um, the fact that she was interested in me just kind of surprised me. So of course we started going out. I think one of the biggest influences she had on me was she uh, was quite sophisticated. I mean, she, she knew which fork to use at a restaurant, you know, the salad fork, the dinner fork, and you know, she knew all that stuff and I had no clue, you know. And she lived with her mom. Her parents had been separated for years, but she had two brothers, one in Victoria, one back east in Ontario, he was in the Air Force or something. So she lived with her mom and she, uh, she was quite responsible, quite grown up, very, she could really have, you know, adult conversation. She could talk to anybody. She was comfortable talking to anybody about anything. She'd be talking to the prime minister or something, you know, or the president, you know, she was, she was that comfortable. And she was very much into relationships. herself very well, always well-mannered, well-spoken, I guess they're very nice looking. Um, and that lasts about a year. We actually moved in together for a short time. Um, and of course the relationship fell apart because she moved to Victoria to find herself. I'm not sure if she's still looking or what. But anyway, they used to say she was a first girl. That really broke my heart. I know I had some some, you know, puppy dog crushes when I was a kid, you know, I, I talked about that in my other videos, but this, this woman really, I thought we'd probably get married someday, and I was just crushed when she left, but of course you get over that. And the last time I saw her, because I remember she, when she was getting married, she stopped in to visit me and my ex, Bridget getting married, she stopped in to see us, showed us some wedding pictures, and, and then after I was married, I bought a house. She stopped in one day, and uh, our, we already had our firstborn, and um, I think we we're expecting our second, and, and she just dropped in out of nowhere. You know, it was great to see her. I mean, she looked the same, you know, she never seemed to change. It was good to see her, really was. Um, she had a, um, a mother and a sister. And, well, I know she had a mother, but and I guess her mom may have passed away by now, I'm not sure. She would definitely be in her, well into her 80s. Her sister was my age. Um, since she's a couple years younger, her sister was like, she was in my homeroom class and she was very nice looking too. But uh, yes, yeah, Cindy was uh, very, very taught me a lot about, you know, being more sophisticated, you know, and about certain um, books to read and poetry and, and music. You know, she introduced me to, uh, to Sean Phillips and, uh, you know, Jackson Brown. I mean, I'd heard of Jackson Brown, but didn't really, I wasn't familiar with this music. And, um, Sometimes you like to be a little too sophisticated, but it was kind of cute in a way though too, but anyways, 
spending all our time together. Oh wow. That was hot. There's some hot peppers in there. Wow. What's that Mexican forecast? Susan and I became friends, and of course it developed beyond that rather quickly, and of course we fell in love. Um, once the course ended, even before that, we were living together. I mean, there was a group of us living together, in a house there was four of us, but eventually her and I moved out, got our own place and just stayed that way. We stayed that way. I mean, we lived, we started living together in 81. Stopped living together in 2008. So we lived together for a long time. But she had the biggest influence on me. She believed in me. She believed in me. She, uh, she said, I'd like you to try and build something for me. I said, oh, no, but I don't think I can do that. She says, oh, I know you can. You, you, you know, if you put your mind to it, I know you can do it. I have faith in you. And so I would, I would do something. I would, I would build a, a set of stairs or I'd build the greenhouse or whatever. I'd, or I'd, 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 you know, whatever. Because she encouraged me and believed in me. Which was something that I think most of us need. We need someone to to encourage us and to believe it, believe in us, and to build our confidence. And she certainly did that. Now, of course, Susan changed my life the most. She's the mother of my three children. We owned houses together, property, you know. We had a life together from 1981 to 2008. We lived together for 27 years. Of course, the marriage fell apart at one point. Um, of course, that was difficult, very difficult. evil. Try to focus on the 5%, that's good. Now I know that's not easy. But of course she shaped my life more than anybody. I 
sometimes when you're drawing a dead, pouring from Peter to pay Paul, and working your butt off, it should remind me, well, look what we have. We have our own home, we have kids, we have jobs, we have our health, we have each other. And I'll never forget, we've been in the same house for years and years and years. Um, 23 years. And we're going to sell it. Move to a different neighborhood and do our house. And we wanted that house real bad. See, it's more like seeing a um, an old relative or something. Mm, I love that propaganda. Now, another lady who shaped my life. that I worked at. I started working there in 86. She started the same year I started in the spring. She started in the fall. And we always, um, right from the start, we just kind of connected on a, on a friendship level. You know, really, she'd be in the staff at the same time as I was eating her lunch and blah, blah, blah. And, um, you know, we just kind of connect. We were always very good friends, and we still are. It was never anything more than that. But, uh, she was another woman who taught me that men and women can be total friends and nothing more. And when I was going through my divorce, she was the first person that I, that I told. I went and we met up at Tim Hortons and I talked to her about it and told her. And, um, she was somebody who was always a confidant. Somebody I knew I could trust, and to this day I, I know I, I still feel that way. Um, very good person. She's always been a 
very good friend. husband passed away from cancer January 2024 and unfortunately Anne Marie has cancer now as well and so she's fighting that but John and I took her for lunch two months back and she was looking really good doing good I was married. I never traveled a 
talks and whatnot, and I have traveled. My ex and I were together 22 years before we ever got on a plane together and actually went somewhere. We were together 10 years before we did a road trip. her grandkids more than anything. She's got four granddaughters. Try not to be too noisy. So far we've had a lot of fun together. going through my separation and I knew I was going for a divorce the house was up for sale we were getting ready to split there was a woman that I dated a few times her name was Lynn and we met on on Facebook I just my ex signed me up to Facebook I guess she wanted me to meet somebody or something but got on Facebook and she lived in a small neighboring town called Lady Smith and she was the first woman I went out with um, since 1981, since, you know, before meeting my, my ex-wife. And I was, at that point, the reason she's so significant, I'm surprised that I forgot about her till now. She was the first woman I actually um, dated when I knew my marriage was ending. And when I say dated, I meant with the intention of meeting somebody to uh, to be with. Um, we both liked each other. So, the 
this was 2008. And I'm going out with this woman who went and saw a movie at dinner first at this rib joint. And I went and saw a movie called National Treasure. They could have Nicolas Cage or somebody. But uh, it was so bizarre. Because we, we had a coffee date to start with. And it didn't feel right. Not, not meeting her didn't feel right, but I felt like I shouldn't be doing this. But I'd remind myself that I was legally married, but clearly separated because my marriage was going south. So when I met this woman, I had a coffee date, agreed to go for dinner and a movie, which we did about a week later. I remember walking up there and she's already there waiting for me outside. The restaurant you know, looked really nice, all dressed up. And it seemed weird. I kept thinking, what would my, my ex-wife and my kids think? Like, what would my kids think if they saw me, you know? That used to worry me more than anything. What would my kids think? Seeing their dad or somebody else. It's funny, I didn't have her on my list of, of 
names of women who uh, who really shaped my life. But no, she uh, she reaffirmed that yes, uh, you know I, I I can still be uh, attractive and interesting to the, the right woman, and uh, and vice versa. You know I I I was able to just take a woman out on a date. I know that sounds kind of ridiculous, but when you haven't done it for so many years, you just you think, well, what, what's going to be like? And it was just very natural. So anyways, uh, there it is, my friends. Thank you, Guppy Bill, for suggesting this. Uh, I hope you're doing well, my friend. And all the rest of you, I hope you're staying amazing out there in the land of awesome. Uh, shout outs, hit me up if you want to shout out comments. Sometimes it might take me a day or two to get to the comments, maybe even longer. Uh, bear in mind, I'm like everybody else. I, I have a lot of things that require my attention. And lately with my daughter's wedding coming up, I'll be quite busy with that. So I want to thank you for tuning in. You look after yourselves, look after each other, and we'll see you next time, okay? By the way, I recommend that Cuban Crunch. It's a good sub.